Oh, Auntie, how are you? Fine. Why today so late? Oh, too many deliveries today. Okay, bring the boxes in, okay? I.O. Henry. This is I.O. Eric. Tell me what happened. Sir, two supermarket staff were robbed. Cash amounting to 25000 was missing from the office safe. This way, sir. Sir, that's the same. Nicole, process the scene. Yes, sir. Can you describe the robber to me? He was masked. That's all I can remember. Do you have a good look? His face was covered by some dark green T-shirt. I can't see clearly. Did he carry a weapon? Yeah, yes. yes. He had a knife, which looked like the one from a pantry. What about his physical build? It's about 1.6 meter and the sling build. Is there any other distinct description of him? He has an accent. What sort of accent? I think he could be a nation. All ground resources to look out for one male subject, believed to be Chinese, wearing black t-shirt, blue jeans, slim build, height about 1.6 meters, carrying a black colored sling bag. Subject had committed a case of armed robbery. He had fled towards Holland Housing Estate. Roger. My colleague Mui Hyang was supposed to relieve me at the cashier. When she didn't show up, I went to the office to find her. During that time, did you see any suspicious person at the entrance of the store? No. I went to the office to find Jun Jie to cover me. I saw someone running off from here then. Look! Yes, that's the knife. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Thank you. His face isn't clear on CCTV. Yes, but do take note of his clothes. I believe the culprit could have been spotted when he arrived and left the crime scene. Astrin, could you check out the CCTV footage from premises around the vicinity? Yes, sir. After committing the robbery, assuming they were accomplices, someone would have picked him up. But if he was alone, he could have taken a taxi and paid the fare 
using stolen money. Sounds probable. Ashwin, could you contact all the taxi companies, find out from the drivers if they had picked up anyone who looked like the culprit? Time frame is about 2.30 to 4 a.m. Location is in Gimo Housing Estate. Yes, sir. And on Sunday night itself, the culprit could have taken a bus or MRT to the crime scene. If by MRT, the closest station would be Buena Vista. Can you contact Transcom to retrieve the CCTV footage? The subject's build seems to match the culprit. And so are his clothes and shoes. But the culprit was wearing a black t-shirt. Yes, but if you look closely, he could be wearing two layers of clothes when he arrived at the crime scene. Right, the colour of the outer shirt is dark green. Which is the same colour as the shirt that covered his face when he committed the robbery. Adrian, what do we have? So I have this CCTV footage. Sir, and this second video was taken from a loading bay of a store. Sir, a taxi company just called. One of the drivers picked up a man at Gimmo at about 2.40 a.m. The passenger was wearing dark clothing and carrying a black haversack. Sounds like a suspect. Isn't Gimmo near to Horn Drive? Sai, invite the driver over for an interview. Yes, sir. I remember he was panting like he has been running when I picked him from Gimmo. Topayo is a big estate. Which part of Topayo do you want to go to? You go to the house. I'll tell you a little bit. He asked me to you why he was panting? Yes. He told me he was not feeling well. If you see him again, can you recognize him? No. It was dark. I couldn't see him very well. Anything else you can tell me more about this passenger? Well, he spoke with an accent. What sort of accent? He spoke with an accent which my Malaysian friend would speak. Where exactly did you drop him off? He directed me to Topayo East and I dropped him somewhere near Block 27. No trace could be made from the DNA taken from the crime scene. What about the knife? There were prints, but no profile match, which means that the culprit has no criminal records. Gentlemen, I got word from Intel. Suspect entered Topayo MRT station last Sunday at about 10.10 p.m. Arriving at Buena Vista at 10.40 p.m. Seems like he knew where he was going. And for the last three months, he has been travelling often between Topayo and Marina Bay MRT stations. Which means that he might be living in Tobayo or working in Marina Bay. Gather the team. I'm calling for a case conference. This is a man wanted for a case of armed robbery at the store in Buena Vista. CCTV footage retrieved from Buena Vista MRT station shows that he's a male Chinese, height about 1.6 meter tall, last seen attired in green t-shirt, jeans, and a black canvas shoes. This was a knife which was found near to the scene of crime. He was seen near Block 27, Topayo East, and he would transit regularly between Topayo and Marina Bay MRT stations. At this juncture, we have yet to establish the identity of the suspect. Since we know his whereabouts, we shall ambush the arrest him. Read, inform the task force and home paying, head down to Marina Bay MRT station. Guangzhou and Ruben, both of you will go to Topayo MRT station. Ashring, Eric, and myself, we will stake out in the area of Block 27, Topel East. Bravo! Any sign of the suspect over? Negative, over. Charlie, report over. Negative, over. Continue, keep watch. Start calling Alpha, Tango spotted. I repeat, Tango spotted along Lorong 6 bus stop. Roger, I'm on my way, over.
Police, we need to see your ID. Why? Your ID, please. Ho, we are placing you under arrest for case of armed robbery. Robbery? I didn't do anything! Kui Ho, what happened? Ma'am, I'm Senior Investigation Officer Henry Chua from Clementi Police Headquarters. I'm Mrs. Wu, Kui wife. What's going on? Ma'am, we are arresting your husband for armed robbery. But I didn't rob anyone. You're, you're making a mistake. Seize that green T-shirt. I was asleep when he woke me up at 3.30 a.m. saying he wanted to go to casino. Do you know where your husband went to last Sunday night? No. He told me he wanted to meet his friends. Did he tell you where he was going to? No, he did not. When your husband returned home, were you aware he had about $25,000 with him? No, I was not aware. Did he tell you anything before both of you left for the casino? He told me he made a few hundred dollars from betting. He also said he liked taking me to gambling because he felt lucky. Did he give you any of the money from his winnings? About three hundred dollars. Where were you last Sunday night? I went to play pool with my friends. And where did you meet your friends? At Bona Vista MRT station. At what time? Ten thirty p.m. And who were those friends you met? Atan, Asing, and Awai. No. And where did you go play pool? We didn't go. Why not? Atan uh, didn't show up, so I go home. How did you go home? Ah, uh, saying, uh, no, no, ah, uh, why uh, send me home? And what time did you arrive home? One a.m. Really? Yes. What happened after that? My wife want to go to casino, so I go with her. What time did you arrive at the casino? At about four thirty a.m. Gentlemen, what do we have? This was taken from the suspect flat at Kim K Avenue. What about earlier in the morning when they arrived home at about 1 a.m.? Well, watch this. After dropping off at Topayo East, he arrived at 3.08 a.m. and not 1 a.m. as he had claimed. Adrian, do you have anything on the suspect? Yes, I have. Four months ago, Ken Ho left for a delivery company where he used the words a driver. Why did he leave? The boss of the delivery company didn't say anything. Simply said he resigned. What's interesting is that Kyoho used to make a delivery to the store at Holland Drive. Maybe that's how he got to know about the layout of the store. Zai, anything? Yes. A construction company at Marina Bay has confirmed that Ng Kyoho is working at one of the companies there. Which explains his regular trips between Topayo and Marina Bay. What about his friends, Atan Asing and Awe? According to the construction company, he has no registered workers under those names. I know Atan for about a year. Where did you first meet him? At the construction company where we work. Is that so? Yes. What about our way, Ah Sing? At the same construction company, ah? we work there. Then why is it the company doesn't have record of these people? Tell me. Tell me the truth. When did you join the company? About three months ago. Before that? I worked as a delivery man. Have you ever made deliveries to the store at Bonavista? Did you take the kitchen knife from the store? Sir, I never really wanted to use it. So why did you take the knife? Sir, I only wanted to use it to frighten people. Were you alone in this robbery? Yes. I was alone.
Why did you rob the store? I robbed because I need a lot of money. But you have a job. Yes. Not enough. Why is that so? Sir, I like to gamble. For the past few years, I lost a lot of money. I owe a lot. Then the loan sharks in Malaysia are after me. And if I don't settle the debts, me and my wife cannot go back. Ng Kyu Ho was found guilty of armed robbery. He was sentenced to three years and six months imprisonment and 12 strokes of the cane. A sum of about $25,000 was taken from the safe in the office. While Ng Kyu Ho had reportedly paid about $15,000 to loan sharks, the remaining $10,000 was subsequently recovered from the accused wife, relatives and friends. These recipients claim that they were unaware that the money was actually stolen. When the case was first reported, very little was known about the suspect who was caught on CCTV. As he had no prior criminal record, Ng Kyu Ho managed to evade detection. However, the veil of anonymity was eventually shattered when SIO Henry and his team of investigation officers persisted. With assistance from fellow officers at Queenstown Neighbourhood Police Centre and the Public Transport Security Command, the case was solved and the culprit apprehended within five days. If you are a retailer, the police would like to remind you to bank in your takings on a daily basis. Do not leave large amounts of cash or valuables on your premises. And install a security alarm and close circuit television cameras at strategic locations. Ensure they are tested periodically and in good working condition. Coming up next, more road safety tips for you and your children. Young children may not understand the dangers of moving vehicles on the road. Being physically smaller makes them less visible and therefore more vulnerable to traffic accidents. In this segment, we would like to share some of the accident scenarios which you might like to take heed in order to protect your children. Always practice a curb drill when you cross the road. This means always look right, look left, and look right again before you cross. Raise your hands so that you are visible to other motorists and road users. Only cross when you see that all vehicles have stopped and it is safe to do so. If you have dropped something in the middle of a road, do not stop to retrieve it immediately. More importantly, do not bend down in the middle of the road to pick your things up. Other motorists may not see you. For the children, refrain from playing while crossing the road. Always hold on to your parents' or caregivers' hands. When crossing the road, always keep a lookout for oncoming vehicles. As parents, you play an important role in your children's safety on the roads. Set a good example by obeying all traffic signals and using pedestrian crossings to cross the road. Remember, the lives of your children matter. We've come to the end of Crime Watch. Feel free to drop us an email if you have any comments. Until next time, I'm DSP Julius Lim, signing out. <laughs>